any kind of like pseudo-scientific claims, you know, magic, you know, spoon bending, whatever it is, you know, but I mean we do get labeled definitely as just being a um, anti-religious organization because that that is what we tend to spend most of our time on. Well, yeah, um, religion, I mean, okay, belief in, in any kind of like invisible sky daddy is completely irrational and sometimes when you tell people that they're going to be offended, they're going to say that you're mean, you know, you're going to have insults hurled at you, and, you know, I mean, like, sorry, the truth hurts, I don't know what to tell you, you know, like, what do you want me to say beyond that? Well, I, I disagree. I would never say that I am the bearer of the truth. What I would say is that they're, no, I said that, well, the, okay, the truth is that their belief is irrational. Now, whether I am the bearer of truth, as in some kind of ultimate truth, no, I, the only thing I could say to, to that is there is no evidence to support the existence of God, therefore there is no reason to believe in it. So if you continue to believe in it, then you must accept the fact that your belief is irrational. Irrational meaning that your belief is not based on factual evidence. So I don't bear any truth other than the fact that religion is irrational there's no like greater truth that I have that, that anybody else isn't capable of attaining if they just use their brain. I, I mean, I wouldn't agree that um, viewing the world and making your mind up individually is necessarily the best way. I think it's very important for people to think for themselves, to not be swayed by the, you know, arguments of ad populum. But at the same time, the, the thing that constitutes evidence would have to be, you know, I mean, based essentially on the scientific method. Objective, verifiable proof. Things that can be repeated, that things that, you know, the, pe ma the vast majority of people can experience, can see, can touch, feel, and we know is there due to repeated experiments upon its existence. Yeah. Well, they're completely closed-minded. Yeah, yeah, they've already made up their minds. Um, but despite the fact that that may be true for a large portion of them, not everybody's like that. I myself was like a fundamentalist Christian for years and, you know, got to the point where I could no longer like compartmentalize my God belief and I had to start researching it. And once I started researching it honestly, and stopped saying, well, this is just what I believe. Because, I mean, that's what happens inside the mind of, you know, any kind of devout believer in anything, is that when opposing evidence, you know, presents itself to you, you just push it away. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. So, in order to be an open-minded person and to grow intellectually, you must not push those things away. You must explore them and find out if it's true. Um, well, if your structured belief is in something that's false and incites violence and divides us, then yes, I do think it's something that's bad. Well, I mean, they, they, they do that as well. Yeah, I mean, they do that as well. They use it to justify it. But at the same time, if the general population was not already inculcated into that belief, they wouldn't be able to use that as the justification. And if you look around the world, not just today, but at you know, all points during you know, recorded history, the vast majority of violence has been caused due to religious differences, due to conflicts in belief, whether it's you know, like the Sunnis and the Shiites, or the Protestants and the Catholics, or I mean, you know, no matter what it is, it has always hinged on religious differences in some respect. We like to tag it societally as being like a cultural difference, like the, you know, the Kurds and, you know, the Arabs or whatever, they don't like each other, but it really comes down at its most fundamental core to a religious difference. Oh yeah, that's the best argument ever. <laughs> um, well, yeah, the, the whole uh, atheism and communism link is, uh, I mean, essentially just espoused to try to invalidate your position by using, you know, the actions of these people who were not acting for the cause of atheism, as opposed to, like, the Catholic Church,
in the Crusades who were acting specifically for the purpose of crushing another religion and promoting that religion. Joseph Stalin wanted an atheistic nation because communism is about state worship. State is the god. And if you have allegiance to some power that's higher than the state, then ultimately you're a threat to them. So they were, I mean, you know, megalomaniacal dictators who wanted to eliminate religion for the purpose of promoting themselves, not promoting a world. I mean, it's the no true Scotsman fallacy that essentially anybody who does anything that I don't like can't possibly share the same belief. Hitler was Catholic, sorry, you know. If, if you don't like it, I mean, go back, look at the pictures of him with the Pope, look at the, you know, the belt buckles that they used to wear that said, Gott mit uns, you know. Like, the evidence is there, and it's clearly on the side that Hitler was a Catholic. Whether he personally believed it, like, I don't know, does George Bush personally believe in God as much as he says he does? I don't know. How much of it is pandering? I mean, you're talking about politics here.